You can yeah. choose money or you can choose what you love. Just choose one thing to move toward and then just go with the path and you'll end up somewhere. But if you st stand here trying to decide what to do, you'll still be here in a year, two years, three years, four years. Just choose something you kind of like and don't hate. Here's my advice. Just choose anything. It doesn't even matter. Just choose anything. So here's an example. If you, We'll sure. use the back of this couch here. You're, this is you. <laughs> Can you, are we filming that? Sure. I, I don't even know if this is gonna be worthwhile, but we'll say this. <laughs> Try it. This is you, right? And you're like, I don't know what to do. I'm not sure what to do, and you just, you're just sitting, sitting here doing nothing. But then just choose frigging anything. Let's just say, uh, oh, I wanna be an actor. Just, who cares? Maybe you don't, I don't know, just choose the one thing. So you choose one thing and now you have a goal, right? Just choose a goal, it doesn't matter. And now maybe you're gonna start going to auditions, you're going to auditions, and then wait, you got a job, but it's a voiceover work. It's a, or maybe it's on radio, you get a little radio gig, right? So now you're like, oh, radio's fun, I'm gonna be a radio host, and that's your next goal. Then you get a call to do like a voiceover on a cartoon or something, and you're, and you're like, okay, I'll be a cartoon voice. And guess what, now you're actually moving, and maybe you will end up being a, you know, the, the, the voice of whatever, you know, on the next Pixar movie or something like that. And then start moving toward it, and you'll find that the course and path of life will bring you exactly where you're supposed to be. The best way to get involved, get started in anything is to be willing to work for free. Yeah, yeah. Internships, like, to me, yeah. are the path to, Anything, and if you want to, if you want to live in your passion, whatever your passion is, you have to be willing to not make money at it. Yep. If you want to do what you love, you got to do. You have to. You, you have a choice. You can yep. choose money, or you can choose what you love. Have you guys heard this? The insecure way is the secure way. Um, you guys have heard that quote, and what it means basically is, my parents, and I'm sure like most people's parents say, get a good job, try and make some money, make a good living, yep. and because they think that's secure if you make go and make money. But if you do a job and you make money, you lose that job. Yeah. Then you lose the money and you have nothing. Right, right, what right. What he says is if you choose your passion, yeah. it actually doesn't matter whether you make money or you lose money because you're always going to have your passion and be happy, so it doesn't actually matter. And that's your safety net. Right. But the challenge of that is that it might be eight years or four years before you're actually making a living at it yeah. versus something else. There's four things when someone gives you feedback or criticism, however it's intended, whether ill or positive. And so one is, not to take it in, but to kind of catch it. I think of it like a catcher's mitt. If you mm. tell me something, you come across this way, I'll grab it, and then I'll look at it, and I'll think, okay, is it true? If it's true, cool, I'll put it in and learn from it. If I think it's not true, cool, I'll throw it away, no harm, no foul, I'm not gonna dwell on it, mm. right? And I think everybody needs this in this world, because we're all on, most of us are in social media, and we're all getting, like, <laughs> you know, all our thoughts are getting picked apart, <laughs> you right. know, all the time, so we really need this more than ever. Then the third one is you get it and it's a maybe. Well, I'm not sure you said this about me. I'm not sure. You know, what do you guys think? You know, what do you think? I'll ask my friends and I'll ask other people and get some feedback. And if it's true, well, cool. Maybe I'll learn from it. If everyone's like, this is total nonsense. Ignore that dude. I throw it out. Right. And then the, but then there's a fourth one and this is where the real growth is. Do you know what the fourth one is? I don't. The fourth one is you get it, you throw it out. I'm talking to you and then maybe later I'm talking to, you know, you. I get it. And I'm like, no, it's not true, I throw it out. And then later I'm talking to someone else. I get it, it's the third time it's come back to me and I throw it out, I'm like, wait, maybe I gotta take this thing a little more right. seriously. And it becomes a maybe, and then it becomes a yes. And that's when the big growth thing is because you kept ignoring this thing that was in your face. So the best feedback, like where you really grow, is you keep getting the same feedback, you keep dismissing it. At some point you say, wait, maybe they have something. So one way I do this is um, I get together a group of people and we sit together once a week and talk about the stuff going on in our lives. I find group therapy really powerful uh, because if it's just one-on-one, -on -one, I can just say I disagree with you, but when four or five people are saying, hey dude, no, you're really coming off like that or mm. you're really having this problem in your relationship and maybe need to look at it, and five people are saying it, like it, it's pretty hard to dismiss them. I know a lot of my friends have written really, really successful books, and even I wrote a book called The Game, which has probably sold like million, millions of copies. And literally when I wrote it, I thought nobody would read it. I thought nobody would read it, but I thought this story is so crazy, I just have to tell this story. So these things that seem, you can spend all your time trying to engineer the perfect thing. And the truth is, we have no control. We just don't know what's gonna work or what's not gonna work. For example, a lot of marketers say to follow your audience, see what your audience wants. And the problem with following your audience, for those of you who even have audiences already on Steam, it can become a trap because all your audience knows is what you've done in the past they don't know what, you do, what you're gonna do in the future. So if you're following your audience, you're already trapped. You know, your audience should be following you as you move forward through life. And it gets harder. 
and again, because I talked to so many musicians, you think, okay, is it true that as musicians or artists get older, they just don't get as good because they're not young and in touch anymore? It's not really true. What happens is they get trapped in their own success, they get trapped in what their audience wants of them, and they get trapped in having responsibilities. So sort of being in touch with you and going where you want to go and not being afraid to leave people behind is what's going to actually make you a leader. Here's the secret to life. Don't take it personally. Not just for pickup, but for life in general. Everyone's a jerk to you someday, and you, you, when someone's an asshole on the street and bumps into you and says, F off, it's not about you, it's, you know, he's a jerk. If uh, you have a day and you lose your job and your girlfriend breaks up with you, crash your car, the world doesn't hate you, you just had a bad day. Same thing, it'll make life so much easier if you don't take it personally, which means that as you go in this world, your friends are not gonna tell you the truth about the really things that are really wrong with yourself. So, as you enter this world and you talk to guys, you're gonna find out what your problems are and what they aren't. When they tell it to you, don't take it personally, you think about it. And you gotta have this filter inside. I think this, this is what allowed me to excel. You have to have this filter inside that takes in all criticism, not personally and not judgmentally. You take in the criticism, you think, is that true? And you take a hard look at yourself. And if it's true, you work to solve it and change it. If it's not true, you just throw it out and move out. But as you go there, we're here because we're admitting we need something better in our lives. We're here because we're admitting we're a little bit broken. There's something we need to learn we haven't. So as you do it, you want to take in all the criticism that comes in and work on what you need to work on. So, so don't take it personally. Don't hold anything back. There's a quote from Carl Rogers who says, the personal is the universal. I know so many people who think they're going to appeal to everyone by being generic and universal, and you appeal to nobody. But if you talk from your heart and you say the most personal stuff, the stuff you're scared, by the way, the only book, reason my books I think are successful is because I say the shit that I'm too scared to tell my friends or tell people. Somehow I can write it. And when you write it, people, people read, oh yeah, I relate to that. No one said that before, but that's exactly what I'm, what I'm going through. So don't hold back. There's a difference between just vomiting emotionally all over the page. You still have to be follow the number one rule of being interesting, right? But the stuff you're too scared to tell everyone, that's the stuff you should be writing about.